Hey guys, the Explorer 4 here at The Horror Boy. Welcome back to some more reviews. And today, uh, we're going to be getting to another um, foreign horror film. Now, I know I've been reviewing a lot of these movies lately. Um, it's because I've been really interested in seeing them. I mean, they're films that are very unique. And I love some of these European films' style. Like, I've really gotten into them. And I've been uh, wanting to discuss them for a while, but I never got a chance to record the video. So, um... I'm going to be uh, discussing uh, some of these movies, because I didn't really get to do some reviews on them, so I'm going to be uh, recording some reviews. And today I'm talking about a French film, a French horror film called Funny Games, which came out in 1997, gets a 7.6 on IMDb, and was directed by, I'm going to try and say it, Michael Haneke? Michael, Michael Haneke. Michael Haneke? I know I'm saying it so wrong. But uh, I know he also made... Um, he made um, The Tall Man, which is a movie that I've been hearing about. I believe it's a 2012 movie. I know he also made that, um, which I haven't seen it, but I've always heard about it. Um, in this movie, I remember it was requested for me to see it by my friend John from his graveyard. He had been a really big fan of the movie, and he recommended me to watch it. And I've always heard about funny games. There's been plenty of channels that I've... Uh, visited that I've discussed this movie, and I've always been curious about this film, because it seemed very different than most horror films, and it is, uh, I will actually say this is a brilliant horror film, this is like easily one of my favorite horror films to watch, uh, not like, I don't watch it a lot, because it's a really hard movie to digest, but it's easily one of the best horror films, or one of the best examples of that true horror, that... I think is out there. I think this is one of the best horror films um, I've seen in a long time. <clears throat> now, this movie, like I said, <coughs> I've heard about <coughs> about it for a while now, and I've always known it has a kind of a cult following. And um, when I finally sat down and watched it, it's one of those movies that will leave an impact on you that you'll remember for sure after watching it. It's a film that will always stick in your mind. Um, it's a gut punch of a film. It's very hard to sit through. It's not a fun movie. If you guys are wanting to sit through it like it's a fun movie, it's not a fun movie. It's a true horror film. And um, the story is pretty basic. I mean, the this uh, family goes out by this... Um, they, they go to this... I think it's like a vacation home out by this pond. And when they're out there, there are these two guys who just show up and claim to be the neighbors. And it kind of becomes a home invasion movie where they go in there and they start playing these games with them. And um, basically that's the plot. I mean, they start, you know, psychologically messing with this family and eventually they start torturing them a little bit and playing games with them. And the movie kind of goes on from there. And I'll get into more of the specifics in a second. But I want to point out that this movie... Uh, first of all, I think is brilliant in the fact that it knows what the audience is expecting. Like, it's one of those horror films that's going to play with your expectations. To wait, you're not really sure how far it's going to go, or what's going to happen next, or what, how long a shot even stays is um, not for certain. I mean, you don't know anything when you're going to a certain point into this movie. And I really found it to be brilliant in this film. I mean, it really sucks you in from the first couple of scenes. When you're into it, and there's this weird foreboding darkness to it. Because even when it starts out, I mean, it's very subtle suspense. But when it's there, the suspense is so effective. Like, there's a scene where literally this uh, the wife is in the kitchen. It's just a long, I think about a ten minute scene of her in the kitchen. Just, you know, chopping up some stuff, getting some stuff ready, and doing dishes, and she's talking on the phone, and one of the bad guys comes in, who I swear looks like a Baldwin brother. Looks like the, the Baldwin brother from Vampires. If you guys have seen that movie, you guys know what I'm talking about. He looks exactly like the Baldwin brothers. So, you got this guy coming in there, he's asking for some eggs, and um, while she's getting the eggs, she's like, do you want a sack to hold these in so that they don't drop and, and break? He's like, oh, no, no, it's fine. He takes the eggs and drops them by accident, and she gets upset, but she cleans it up, 
this is the whole scene too. She's cleaning it up. She goes to the fridge, gets him some more eggs. He accidentally knocks the phone into the water. She gets more frustrated. He gets the eggs and gets out of there. And then before you know it, they're trying to say, well, can we play some golf? And the wife is like, I'm fed up with this. No more games. What's going on here? And they're pretty much saying, no, no, you're not going to not play these games. You are going to play these games. And she's like, how dare you talk to me that way? And you're wondering, like, what is going on here? It starts out just so... You're not sure if they're psychopaths or killers or they're thieves or are they going to hurt her. You don't know what's going to happen. And all that's happened is just a couple of eggs breaking. When a movie can make me, like, creeped out and on the edge of my seat because of some eggs breaking and a phone going into the sink and them trying to play some golf, somehow, some way in this movie, that it, it's creepy. I don't know how they pulled it off. I don't know how they did it. Somehow, some way in this movie, that was done effectively and is done with suspense. And will, it will have you on the edge of your seat. It is so intense. And the intensity from that point, and this is a long movie. This is an hour and 48 minutes long. It's almost two hours long. The suspense never lets up. Never lets up. As a matter of fact, the suspense is right down here at the beginning of the movie. The suspense just keeps increasing every single scene. And the father, the husband comes back with the son, because they went out, I guess, on a boat or something. They came back, and they're telling the, the husband, like, no, we're not going to leave your house. And he's, like, trying to call the police and stuff. They break his leg, bring him into the living room, and these killers are talking like it's just average, I guess, every day for them, you know? Talking about just the random stuff, like, you know, well, we have till midnight. We have a bet. So we're going to bet that we can kill you guys by midnight. If not, we'll let you guys free. And we won't, we won't kill you. We won't harm you. We'll let you go. It's just a game for them. And it's really like, whoa, that is so crazy. And, and it makes it, like, creepy. They act so nonchalant about it. And the, their dialogue and the way they act. They make you despise these bad guys. And for most of this movie, the bad guys win. The bad guys win. They're getting away with everything. They Everything is going... The ball's in their court for most of this movie. And it makes you despise these bad guys. Like, literally, I have not seen a movie in so long where I was literally shouting at the screen. You know, like, fuck you, you asshole. Like, these guys sell it. They sell it. And they are wonderful bad guys. You just despise these bad guys. You know. And um, some more things happen. They let, they let the kid run away. And there's a scene where they put this pillowcase over the kid's head. And you even think, oh my god, they're going to kill him. The father starts to freak out. And he's like, no, no, no. Can you breathe? And the son goes, yeah, I can breathe. So you realize, oh, he's not going to kill him. So they, they do these things. They expect it. To play it like a normal horror film where you're like, oh my god. And then the character's like, no, no, we're not going to kill you. We're not going to hurt you. It's fine. We're just going to bet on something. We're going to have a game. Let's, not, let's have a game, you know? And it's like, what? You're watching it and you're trying your best to follow it. But the movie is so smart. It is doing this. It is just weaving around in the horror. It's a, it's a horror film that's weaving around in the genre. It's just, you don't know where it's going. You're like, what is going on here? Trying to figure it out. But the suspense is there. The suspense is there. It never gets boring. Um, and by the middle of the movie, the kid runs away. And it's a suspenseful scene where it's long and drawn out. He goes, gets in, you know, where he, I think he crosses the pond or something like that. And he runs. And one of the guys follow him. And when the kid runs to this house where I guess the fam his family, his other family, is like the uncle or the aunt or something, they're there, and he finds, like, blood and stuff, so they're dead, and he has nowhere else to go, and, um, he basically gets out of there, runs back to the house, and, well, they actually, the guy ends up catching him and bringing him back to the house, and, um, when they get there, there's this scene that I thought was just so, literally, I have never seen, besides Martyrs and besides a few other horror films, I have never seen a, a scene that is so effective like this. 
to make you really... And Last House on the Left is the same way. I Spit in Your Grave. Those are some movies that can really sell the pain and agony in the family. So they bring the kid back to the house. And one of the guys has a gun. And he's like, I'm going to do, you know, eeny, meeny, miny, mo, And whoever lands on him gets shot. And they don't show it. But you get the... It, you, it, it, the way it plays out is the one of the killers goes to make a sandwich. And while he's in there, the guy is counting down, you know, like, eeny, meeny. And then you hear a gunshot. And the wife just screams in pain. And like you in agony, you're just like, Oh my god, what happened? They go back to the to the room and the guy's like, I told you not to Well actually I don't think they was gonna do any any mean money more. I think what was happening was the kid made a run for it and the guy shot him. He killed the kid. But you didn't see him actually shoot the kid, did you see the aftermath? It is literally one of the most heartbreaking scenes I've ever watched. And it's just so, you hate these bad guys so much. These villains are just, you hate them. And the guy goes, you know, why would you kill them? We had a deal. Well, now we can't kill them. We got to go. And they leave the house. And it literally, it's kind of an annoying shot because it lingers too long. But it's still, <clears throat> it's still very effective. Where... The family is just there, and the father's tied up, the, the mother's tied up. It's like a good 10, 15 minute lingering shot of the living room. And the mother is just crying. The father is knocked out, but then when he wakes up, he looks over, he starts crying too. The wife, you know, hops over, grabs a knife, cuts the tape, because she was like, had her hands tied or whatever. Then she goes and, you know, unties the, um, the, the, the father character. And they both start just crying and crying. And it gets so emotional. Um, becomes such a, a well-acted scene. And you really, you feel so bad for these characters. You really do. And they get out of there. And the husband... You know, is going to try and fix the phone. He tells his wife to go. She goes on this road and the bad guys catch her. And the, actually, the ironic thing is that she sees a car and, you know, says, no, I'm not going to get seen. Well, that car ends up being a normal car. Then the car that she does end up stopping and saying, hey, I need you guys' help. Basically, that car has the killers in it. And she gets captured and brung back and they get tied up again. And then it's the next day. I, well, not really the next day, but it's getting ready to be the next day. And it's just so horrible. It's so horrible. They tie her up, and she gets free and grabs this gun and blasts the guy away. I literally stood up and said, fuck yeah. That's how it's done. That's how it's done. You know, I was just like cheering. I was like, yeah. The bad guy comes over, grabs a remote, rewinds the scene, and then, you know, they end up killing the father character. And it's like, oh my god, it makes you so mad and angry. I have never been that pissed off at these characters or pissed off at the director. I'm like, why would you do that? It is so genius. And then the end of the movie, they ended up killing the, the, the mom character. And they get away from it. They get away scot-free. And um, there's another family that they stop by. And you get the idea it's going to happen again. Um there's also a scene where they make the wife strip naked, which is a pretty just awful scene. And the way that it's filmed where it's not, they don't show like nudity and stuff like that. It's just, you see the facial expression and the pain. The fa it's just so heartbreaking. This movie is so hard to digest. It's so heartbreaking and sad, but it's so effective at what it does. It makes you feel just sorry for these characters and um i think it has some wonderful cinematography great uh character with some good acting phenomenal acting not just great acting phenomenal acting i'm gonna go on let me say oscar worthy acting in this movie from everybody the bad guys the family from everybody likable characters as far as the family goes you have great villains in there you have um 
just some good looking effects when they're there. The suspense is through the roof. It is altogether it's one of the most original horror films I've ever seen. And it's brilliant. Utterly brilliant. And I don't say that about most movies. But this movie is very dark, very hard to swallow, very hard to digest. But it is a brilliant horror film. It's a very effective horror film. Um, do I have a problem with it? Some of the shots can linger. Like an eight minute shot is a little too, you know, long for me. Like, yeah, it's effective and it works, but it's an eight minute shot on one little scene. One shot for eight minutes lingering. It's effective, but it's a little annoying. Plus, there is this song in this movie, which apparently is in Cabin in the Woods as well, because Cabin in the Woods did like an homage to this. There's this theme song to the movie. One of the most annoying theme songs I've ever heard in my entire life. Literally, it sounds like somebody just screaming gibberish into a microphone. And it's like a bunch of, you know, absurd guitars and stuff like that. Literally, one of the, I remember when this movie opened up with that and it said, boom, funny games. I was like, oh god, this is a bad sign. The opening music was just horrendous. But, and also the movie ends on that music too. But besides that, the movie is wonderful. It's, it's, in my opinion, one of those modern-day horror films. Well, it's not really modern. It's not 90, 1997. But it's a movie that just doesn't look aged. It doesn't look like it's a 90s movie. It looks very timeless. It's a brilliant horror film, man. Very, very brilliant horror film. And if you can stomach it, if you it's not really gory. It's just very emotional. It's very heavy film. But if you can get into it and enjoy it and watch it, I recommend it, dude. It's just a wonderful horror film that I thought was very effective. Funny Games from 1997. I'm going to give it a solid 9 out of 10. I really thought it was a great uh, horror film. It's very dark. It's not a lot of fun to watch. It's not fun at all. It's very dark and grim. But as a horror film, I think it's very effective. But yeah, I'm going to give it a 9. I think it's a great horror film, a wonderful horror film. Masterpiece. Um, I recommend it. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching the review. Hope you guys enjoyed. And watch this movie if you haven't. Watch Funny Games. Uh, <clears throat> and I'll be seeing you guys later in the next review. And the Explorer of Horror is out. Bye, guys.